just that maybe they're just growing a little bit more curious um, about what may be, uh, what they may not be hearing um, would fill in those gaps. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a next, uh, our next. Next one to predict exactly how long, but what I will tell you is it will nice take work. a long time. There will be multiple appeals if there's a conviction and certainly if there's a death. Most of the death penalty cases across the country in those states that do have it, and some 30 plus states do have it. I, I certainly. It does take a long time, and sometimes these things aren't even carried out drugs to the states to carry these executions often go to the federal level as well. Um, let's get to another question. Hens for all, Michael Bryant, will his lyrics be included? My playlist, but uh, I think that that was a big question early on because, you know, it tends to suggest very prejudicially that, hey, if you're going to write about, about this kind of stuff and sing about killing people and stuff, then you probably killed people. Um, you know, there, and there's not a lot of probative value to that material. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I believe most of that was excluded and shouldn't be in front of this jury. Yeah, and Christine Bradley said in um, her opening, that's artistic expression, we're not going to get into that. Um, so she, she did make that statement. She may be prohibited uh, from getting into that as well. Plus, it's been really controversial uh, around the country. California actually has a law about using uh, Let's get to another question. Um, Gary Dye from YouTube, Afi, we've kind of touched on this before. Uh, what will happen with Melly if he is found not guilty? Will he be provided with a check or something along the lines of you all taking five years of his life? So uh, what happens, let's say, Melly is acquitted? Um, if he's acquitted, I think uh, Terry answered perfectly earlier, he will be set free. He'll be able to leave um, custody. And he, you know, unfortunately, that would be, that would be it. Um, I don't think that he um, will have any course of action against any of the prosecutors or any of the police officers or anybody involved in his custody and prosecution. I think, um, you know, the officers can show that they had uh, probable cause to arrest him and the um, prosecutors can say that they, you know, did not go after him. You know, they had a reasonable belief that he was guilty and there was no prosecutorial misconduct and they did not have um, any particular issue against him. I, I remember uh, defense counsel saying earlier that the, um, I think the lead detective on this case uh, found out that Melly was involved. And if you uh, prosecute a high profile person, you yourself become high profile. But I think that we've seen enough evidence to suggest that uh, the prosecutors mm -hmm. definitely, excuse me, the officers, uh, detectives definitely had probable cause to uh, believe that Melly committed this crime. So. All in all, he won't uh, get anything except his freedom, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, your liberty is uh, very important, worth more than any type of you know money your freedom is. Uh, let's get to um, Josh, the Fortnite kid. Which side do you think the judge and jury are believing more, and how well do you think the defense team is going compared to the prosecutors? Uh, Terry, I know you've kind of touched on this several times throughout our little talk, but uh, why don't you go ahead and explain where you think things stand of, as of now? Well, I definitely do think that the defense is ahead of the game and that the prosecution has really failed so far to meet its burden of proof. I will say the question was also about the judge and the jury. I believe the judge is getting a little bit frustrated because it is taking time. But it's important to take time. It's important for the defense team to make their objections. Whether or not we want to have the trial concluded faster, it is an obligation that the defense has to do this. And so I definitely think from the judge's perspective, he wants this case to be concluded. He does not want more sidebars. And I've just noticed that as time goes along, while he gives each of the sides an opportunity to express themselves, he wants to get this case resolved. And so he's being, I think, a little bit harsher on both parties. As far as the jury is concerned, mm -hmm. you know, they've been paying very close attention 
uh, tension. They lean up in their chairs. They've been very attentive to the entire case, even when we've had those witnesses who go on and on about theoretical things, like when we saw the first week, the person who was the gun expert go on and on and teach us all about these guns. So I think at the end of the day, right now, if we took a poll, the defense is ahead of the game, but I think the judge, the jury, and the parties, and everyone right now is paying very close attention to what's going on. Yeah, that's a big task they've got. It's a very important case. These are very serious charges. Uh, Isaiah Reyes from YouTube. Michael Bryant, why did the state try bringing in uh, evidence while trial had already started and thinking that it would help them bring the jury back? And I'm, I'm pretty sure they're referring to the cell phone information that came up the other day, the discovery violation uh, that the judge said occurred with the, with the state. Yeah, I mean, that's never a good look. And, and fortunately, the jury doesn't know about all of this back uh, backstory that's happening. Uh, but we know there's no love loss between the, the prosecution and the defense in this case. I'm sure Terry's seen it up close down there. Uh, and, and it is an adversarial relationship, but it can still be professional. Uh, but when you cross mm -hmm. that line and you are violating discovery laws and orders, you got, you got a problem. Uh, and I think subconsciously it, it hurts your relationship with the judge because if you can't be trusted on some of the more superficial and really fundamental elements of preparing a case and putting on a case and sharing what you have to share with the opposition, well, maybe I don't trust you to do anything uh, properly. Uh, maybe everything you do, I'm looking at a little uh, side-eyed, you know. So I think we've seen it in this case, maybe more than in many other cases, and I think it does have a negative effect on your case, no matter who it is that's putting, in, uh, putting on their side. It just seems in this case the prosecution's got a lot of problems, uh, and this is just another one of them. Yeah, the judge actually seemed like he was glad it was Thursday <laughs> yesterday. I don't know if you guys caught that, but toward the end of the day, he just looked like... He, he had had enough for the week. Uh, let's take a quick break. Uh, we'll wrap this up and get to more of your questions when we come back. I'm Anjanette Levy, and you're watching Law & Crime. five-star phone service next to half-price phone bill? It's possible with Telemobile Supercharged Phone Plans. Go for the 5 gigabyte plan at just $19 a month. An insanely low price for the same reliable 5G and 4G LTE network you're used to. Come for the great prices, stay for the amazing service.
for joining us here on Law and Crime. We've been taking your questions this Friday afternoon about the YNW Melly double murder trial uh, that's been going on for two weeks now in Broward County, Florida. Terry Austin's been down there covering it dutifully for us. And uh, we've got some great questions still coming in, so keep them coming. We love taking them and explaining everything to you. Onimo Dalla from YouTube, Terry asks, what if drugs and alcohol were involved and it played a part in Portland, not being exactly sure where they were when the shooting happened, could that affect his memory? I think that's a really interesting question. Well, it is interesting. We have not seen any evidence to date about drugs and alcohol affecting anybody's memory, frankly. We do know that Henry was in that car and he drove to the hospital and he told the law enforcement and the officials at the hospital that he had two people who were shot in that car. No one so far has said that, you know, he was in any way not his, you know, full mental state or that he was drunk or that he was on any sort of drugs. So it hasn't come in yet and they certainly have not said that Melly was doing any drugs that evening. So I suppose it could affect the memory of anybody who was there that night. Mm -hmm. But you know, thus far, we have not seen evidence that any of the people involved, including the victims, had any drugs or alcohol in their bodies. Now, we might see something when the medical examiner gets on the stand about drugs and alcohol, but nothing to date that I've seen so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. I, I haven't seen that either. Michael, at minimum, what result does Melly Obviously, it has to be unanimous. Uh, 2017, that they changed. Continues kind of the back and forth weird vacillations on this very. YouTube asks, are there psychological effects that come with being a court defense attorney? Um, okay, thanks, Rich. Uh, there are psychological effects that come with being an attorney, <laughs> especially depending on what area of practice. I was actually speaking um, with someone the other day because uh, you'll find that a lot of uh, attorneys, especially you know trial attorneys, sometimes you know they need different things to release. So you know, alcohol might be one. Um, you know, you'll always find like a really good bar where, where it, you'll find a lot of attorneys, maybe even some judges and representatives, because a lot of criminal defense attorneys deal with a lot. We deal with uh, people in society. Um, it's sometimes it could just be uh, an interesting. It's extremely stressful. I know a You know, sometimes after a trial, you just need to take a break and de-stress and, you know, find your freedom. Yeah, I think you make a really good point there, Afi. Prosecutors, investigators, judges, they are seeing all of those things as our jurors, and it can be pretty traumatic. Uh, Terry, this is a, a good one for you. It comes from Courtney Davis from YouTube. Hi, Law and Crime. Hi, Courtney. Uh, what is the makeup of the jury? Well, Courtney, thank you for that. There are 15 jurors on that panel, and I believe I counted nine women and eight men. Does that add up to 15? I'll have to look at my notes again. Um, <laughs> but as far as their backgrounds are concerned, they are mixed. I looked visually, okay, so there are six men and nine women. I think that's what I said. And it looked yeah, to me- Yeah, that's 15. Yeah, it looked to me as though their backgrounds were very different. Um, you can't really tell by visually looking at someone what their background is, but it looked as though there were, you know, seven people with diverse backgrounds and maybe eight who are Caucasian. Hard to say, though, when you're looking at someone. I will say from age perspective, they are all different ages rangings, I would say, from the 30s to the 50s. The one common trait that they all have is that they are paying very close attention. I said this before. Several of them have glasses, I will say. Several of them are taking notes. But each and every one of them, I've not seen anyone who has fallen asleep. They are all very attentive. They sit up in their chairs. They actually turn their chairs so they can look better at the witnesses who are testifying. So I think it's a good jury. It's a solid jury. I like it when the jury is not all one composition. Uh, it's very interesting. And yeah, they often say, you know, these jurors are supposed to, uh, the juries are supposed to reflect the communities 
they serve. Uh, so they like to have a, a good mix of people, a diverse mix of people on these juries. Uh, we've been taking your questions here for the last uh, two hours and sadly, we are all out of time. We love doing this and we'll be back doing this again with you uh, next Monday. Uh, for now, I'm gonna be signing off. Michael Bryant will be taking over after the break. Terry Austin, I know, is going back to Florida next week for the rest of the trial. So thank you for being with us this last two hours. Afi, thank you for joining us as well. I'm Ann Jeanette Levy and you've been watching Law and Crime. We'll be back. Introducing Asapro Allergy. It starts working in 30 minutes while Flonase takes hours so you can Asapro and go.
certain decisions about uh, things uh, and uh, then we can go forward with it and I instruct you and are you, think you'd be able to follow those instructions uh, and you pay attention to the evidence or do you think that you're concerned about the and the anxiety issue we're past that you're okay yes yeah, well, I've got a lot to come out thank you very important, you know, why was the juror so uh, concerned, so upset? It sounds to me like it was more about fairness, not that she was frightened uh, by the judge, which was that it was not fair. I joined by civil rights attorney Joe Richardson, also with the trial attorney Catherine Lizardo. Producer. Mr. You, was it? Yeah, I was at the Lovers and Friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Wait, you just, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I just, <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. That's so, right. That's when I tell you, man, <laughs> this is a legend of our legend, a real one. <laughs> you know, I searched, I've been searching him so much, and then, uh, you know, this is the first time, like, uh, I've heard about his depression because I've been seeing him for years, and I have never seen him have a bad day. All right, appreciate that. This is a legend, an icon, mm -hmm. hit maker, I'm and a uh, hist historian, because we're going to get... They <laughs> tried to, like... Cause
<laughs> and I couldn't get mad at him because everybody was like, man, he should have caught that. I was like, he didn't know. Right, I was right. grabbing him. Right. So um, the one thing that I did do, I stayed professional. Right. I kept that mic you got back right up. here. You, got back you up. still <laughs> singing. I kept the mic right but, there. But you wasn't sore or nothing? Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Played it off. Yeah, played it off. I played it off. You know how hot them sneakers is? It was hot as hell in Vegas. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I mean, it worked out. I finished it. I got back. I got back to my room. Had had to had to soak in a. <laughs> did, did it go viral that day? Or it was... no, it went viral the second day. The second, the day. second day. And I was like, oh please, don't get to do it. Please, 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 please. <laughs> and I and, and I knew it. They, uh, and my assistant and dancers and everybody was like, nah, G, you you you're gonna <laughs> go. <Yeah. laughs> so I was like, all right, whatever. Mm. And so the day I was like, just go along Let's with go. it. So just it. just have fun with it. You know how many times we just falling? Like, in the 90s, like, you heard? 90s, everything. The... A sex symbol. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, all right. it's okay. For the streets, but I wish yeah, I softened yeah. up. I wish I did. Oh, okay. it maybe like, sooner than you did. Like glo global, like okay, okay. Um, how is it making, you know, money off of like th that image of like? Well, for me, man, you know, we started. I started in uh, '90, so um, I made it in '96. So, um, you know, I knew nothing else but to make, you know, good music and come from the heart, you know, love music, soul music and all that. So, you know, Tied for the lead. Started that 
um, I didn't know how big it was going to be. You know what I mean? Like, you always hope for the best. You don't know what it's going to be. Right. So, you know, for me to have, you know, the, the CDs, uh, the albums that I've had with Timberland and Missy and all those greats. Crazy. Um, man, it's something that I'm constantly thanking, right. thanking God and just the people for because, you know, a lot of people don't understand when you're not popping really here, right. you can go overseas and, and feel like Damn. Michael Jackson. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, 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 like that's real. That one more time. That's real. Yo, I tell that to my friends all the time. All it's like, the time. When, you, man. when you're struggling in America, they're going to pay you they gonna, overseas. They're going to embrace you over there, and you feel like mm -hmm. it was, it's, 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 it's you starting over. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I've it's been, real, man, real. I've been blessed to be everywhere, man. I went to, um, Nigeria, and this was um, back in maybe 99 or something man. like that. And man, they had like a, 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 a what you call, what you call them, a bar, a barcade, a, what you call it? Uh, when you have so many people following you, you have oh, yeah. you have all the motorcycles and all yeah. that kind of, what is it, motorcade? Motorcade, like a presidential so, motorcade. Yeah, yeah, man, and so I went over there and I was like, oh my God, right. this is crazy. Right. So we went straight from the airport to the hotel, but they told us don't leave this, don't leave this. Oh, don't leave the hotel. Yeah, dude, don't, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't leave the grounds. But yeah, you can go from here, like when you just on your, you know, decline a little bit and you just want to reboot, you can go over there, man, and get so much love and get energy and then it, it, it allows you to come back home and just, you know, uh, start start being real uh uh, 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 active Productive. again yeah. in, in, in what it is that you do. So it's a great thing, man. So me still making money and doing what I'm doing, I'm gone every, every weekend mostly. Yeah. Every see, weekend. Every wow. weekend. I'm like a wrestler. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I'll be wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all good, man. It's a blessing. So yeah. I'm going to give you three names I'm, I want you to tell me. Gotcha. Infrared, Frosty, and Tornado. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, I, I you, ducked you, you. I ducked you. I ducked you. I ducked you. I, I, ducked I, I felt like I felt that did. I felt oh that did. Oh, my God. You know what? Uh, I got you. Okay, let me give you some history on that. What's the first one? The first one is Infrared, okay. Frosty, and it's Tornado. Okay, no. <laughs> All of who is, is who? Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we got to hear this. Make some noise. Oh. Hey, you really went back. Yeah. 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 I, like, I, like that, I got that research. I was like, yes, this is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I said it to myself. So here's what it was. Mm -hmm. um, when I got with Jodeci um, in 90, Devontae mm -hmm. uh, specifically. Which is crazy, the, yes. the yeah. Jodeci connection. Yeah, yeah. so, so um, we... You know, I got with them, well, like I said, Devontae specifically, and he was coming up with a new, uh, uh, you know, crew called uh, Swing Mob. Swing Mob, yeah. Swing Mob. Yeah, I got Mob. I got and then, and so, um, you know, he was going around, he was going around the world, going around the, uh, uh, the states, and he was looking for his first solo male artist, first male group, right. female group, female artist, and all that. And I was pretty much picked, along with Missy, Timberland, mm. uh, Magoo, Boogeyman, Tweet, wow. uh, all of us. So the brother had an eye for talent, wow. obviously, right? So um, once we, once I moved up, you know, I had a job. It was like um, 89 and 90. I met them, I think, in 89. And so 90, um, he was like, come on, man. It's, it's, it's time to rock now. We about to, we about to get something. First name is Infrared. Yeah, so, so yeah, so I'm getting through. I got you. So, uh, so he, uh, he say, um, come up. So I think, uh, so when I was coming up, he was like, so what's your singing now? I say, Scrappy, right? So he was like, why? <laughs> so back in the days when I used to break dance, my name was Scrappy GDA, Scrappy Great dancing alive, right? So oh, he was a b boy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, he was like nah. names that we went through trying to find a name that actually, you know, represented me right. and who I am as a person. So, uh, 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 Frosty was. I don't know what made him come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Your mind too. We was trying to make make sense of it. Right. Right? <laughs> Tornado. Yeah, tornado, it was more. That's basically what it was. And so, uh, 
uh, that kind of didn't work out. And so I, I said I've always wanted a name. I, I always... Three syllable thought, names. There you go. Stop it, man. You've been doing your research. God damn. I'm really good. <laughs> so, yeah, it was always a three syllable name and I always wanted to hit her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... I said, Dad, what best represents who I am as a person, as a man? And so my name is Elgin. Mm -hmm. So we just took Jen, and then I was like, wow. First we, first we started with genuine. Oh. And I was like, nah, man, we got this, we got this something. And then came and he was like, what about spelling it different and saying genuine? And I was like, Daddy. Okay. Daddy. I didn't know it had anything to do with your first name. Though. Yes, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, know that yeah, part. Okay, because yeah, I was like, I want to use that. I want to use that. <laughs> so I got you because you because you so I got you because you because you, you named after a basketball player. Uh, yeah, Elgin Bella. Elgin yeah, Bella. Yeah, from the Lakers. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. My mom thought I was gonna probably be a basketball player, but at the end of the day, she was right in the, in the sense of me just being some sort of entertainer. So right. yeah, it was a great thing. And Devonta had a big part in the name, though. So absolutely, right. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because we was like he had a lot of names, man. Tornado, uh, Fifty, mm -hmm. uh, all well, kinds of names. Fifty before Fifty. 50? Yeah, yeah, what? yeah. I mean, Missy did that, but Missy, you know, she always joking. Uh, Cause back in the days, uh, <laughs> I used to wear fake uh, some real jewelry and some fake jewelry. So she said you say fifty percent. Oh, you fifty <laughs> percent. <laughs> so that 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 landed more. Well, 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 like, hell no. Well, like, no, no, we can't do that. But yeah, so yeah. That's that, that, that was so when 50 Cent came out. When 50, did you ever tell 50 nah, that story? Nah, you nah, gotta nah. tell him that story. Nah, because it was, so, it was so long ago. That was 91. Yeah. That was 91. Because we, we, we was all that, on that show together. Yeah. 50 yeah. was on there too. Oh, yeah, that's right. He sure right. was yeah, on there. You should have told him that yeah, story. Yeah, that story is fire. <laughs> that's the, so, um, uh, just another day. Good job. What's up, Drink Champs Army? Ready for a staggering statistic? Nearly 77% of fathers settle for their ladies' uncomfortable baby bag when they're outside with their kids. That's according to your very own eyes, so just look around. Settling is not where it's at. Dads deserve better. No more struggling to find the wipes, the diapers, the cream, or your own personal items. Introducing the Flyest Dad Bag, the firstborn, from flydadgear.com. It's the perfect backpack to keep dad and baby ready for whatever. 21 compartments make it easy to keep everything in its place and never again to dig through the bottomless hole. Oh, that's your lady's bag. Trust me, I wouldn't have become a...
three containers have been detected and marked on your map. After extraction, use the T3 transformer, converting its properties into a usable form for Templar. partner of fly dad if it wasn't legit not only is the firstborn my baby bag but also the bag i take on set for drink champs the bag i travel with and pretty much my go-to backpack for everything i do if staying fly and being knows your goal head to flydadgear.com forward slash amazon and get your fly dad bag today Let's take it from Rochester, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Y'all all in apartments. You have the yeah, dungeon. Definitely. Y'all getting it together. Mm hmm And then, well, how, how, how does that happen? Because you're coming from D.C. Yeah, yeah. So coming from D.C., how did, how did you hook up with uh, Devontae to get to a Rochester, well, New York? We, well, we were already hooked up. Okay. So we were already pretty much a family. Okay, Ooh. so this was like a writing camp. Yeah. Okay. Really, cool. really, really one of those things where, like, mm -hmm. it, it should be a lot more of that. You know what I mean? As far as crew. Right? Yeah. Because we started um, in the studio together, and we started doing contests, like, who can write the fastest? Missy and Timberland. Right. I mean, oh, Missy always so won. Missy always won. She always won. Yeah. So, you know... It was a great boot camp for years for us to learn because I was on tour with them. I was on like three tours with them. I just learned the business and all that stuff. And they, you know, a lot of people thought I was younger than what I was. I, I was already, you know, a, a grown dude, but you know, I was, you know, I had had to, had had a young look. But um, yeah, up in Rochester, I mean, up in uh, Rochester, we were always having, um, you know, write-offs and all that kind of stuff. And and it was a great way for us to stay on our toes, sharpen, you know, iron sharpen. Like iron. artist boot camp. Yeah, it's pretty much that's what right. it was. And, you know, he got that, he got a lot of that stuff from just uh, wanting us to just to be the best at that time. You know what you I mean? Think he was trying to make a Jodeci? Uh, or I don't know. No, I don't think he was trying to his make a Jodeci. Thing. Yeah, he was trying to do his time. thing because he like, kind of left Jodeci. Yeah, I was right. like, uh, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> right, right, so right. he was really on him try, uh, trying to be uh, uh, Andre Harrell. Right. Because yeah, uh -huh. that was one of his mentors. Yeah, okay. Right. And so... I said Motown. Close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close. <laughs> but um, so he was trying to make his own his own Motown, his own, own uh, Uptown Records and all that. And so... Um, you know, unfortunately, it didn't work out. But but I wouldn't change it for the world, bro. But it was a time where like everyone kind of left. Yeah, yeah. And you was the only one that stayed. I was I, the only I, one that stayed. A couple, yeah. couple of people, I believe one of them is Aaliyah and one is Missy. Aaliyah wasn't with us. Well, Aaliyah wasn't yeah, with Aaliyah us. Okay. Was, it was so it's Missy then. Mm -hmm. And Missy was like, she paid you loyal me. to the default. Yeah, she paid. She paid for me to get get back. But did you did you think she was right when she said you was loyal to the default? I didn't look at it like that. I was looking at it like he brought me from D.C. DC yeah. mm. to nothing. And that's been a lot of the times that's been my fault uh, in life, just trusting people as long as I've trusted them. You know what I mean? But I always felt like, look, 
where am I going? Where am I going to go? People was always telling me, yo, come on back home. They ain't going to do nothing. Da, 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 da. But I was like, I'm here. I, I got to make it. I got to do something. I got to, you know, even if it even if it doesn't last as long as it has lasted, I needed to do something. Right. You know what I mean? And so, so, so I stuck it through. But it got a little crazy for a while. Yeah. And so I was just like, yeah. Missy was like, yo, you got to leave. You know, if you need money to leave, I got you and all that. And wow. fortunately, you know, I was able to get back and 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 do the, one of the fastest deals in the 90s. And it was like over the weekend with 550 Music, all right. Sony. All right. So why did you think, because I know we, we all young at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why did you think, uh, Missy and Timberland left in the first place. Was it a, was it about money or was it about like receiving the work? Thank you. You gotta understand when we were up there, all of us was really like just doing our own thing. We would talk and all that, but Missy was getting it. She started getting as a songwriter. Mary J. Yeah, yeah. She, she started getting with Mary J. Blige, right. Kim, Puff, um, Puff. Right. Uh, she was, yeah, she did uh, Raven Simone. Right. That was like right. one of her first joints. And she was with us, uh, 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 702. Scott, was it 702. Yeah. And she did a lot of stuff. So, needless to say, if you're around our our world, people, right. people going to talk to you. I remember you. hearing about Missy yeah. a long time. And she, and, and, she, and, and she just started doing what she was supposed to do. She did the right thing. Right. She absolutely did the right thing. And, you know, we we always talk. You know, she just called me when I did fall off the set. Wow. She wow. said, don't you let nobody tell you, tell you you ain't no star. I said it's all good, baby. It's <laughs> all because, um, yeah, I mean, we spent a lot of time together, man. We spent like six years together. So um, uh, uh, the bond is there. Okay. The bond is definitely definitely there, never will be broken. Her, myself, Timberland, you know, we still got our got our lives to deal with and all that. But if something goes down, they the, they're the first and I'm the first to call them. Right. You know what I mean? Because I, I related to a story that you, you told so, so bad. That mine's is a little bit different, but um, uh, Pharrell didn't come to my homeboy video, my nothing video, oh, one okay. of the biggest records. And he didn't come. And he didn't. He didn't come. Ooh. And he but, he, but he, but he told me, which I believe now. I didn't mm. believe then. Okay. Okay. He said you didn't need me, Nori. Okay. Well, I was like, no, <laughs> I paid for you. You should show the fuck up. I want you to come. So yeah, you, 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 I, 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 so when I see you say that you was bad at Tim for not yeah. showing up in the video, yeah. I have felt that in my soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and, yeah. I, and I, but do you think Timberland didn't show up because? Of similar to the reason Pharrell, like Pharrell was, he he, okay. he really sincerely thought that I didn't need him. Okay, what you talking about? Which which video? Which video because I remember the first one. I think the one you said you paid fifty thousand. No, oh, that was no, 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 no. That was a misunderstanding. I think okay. that was something that the label at that time. I was independent at that time, okay. um, with an independent label, not okay. me just doing everything, but with an independent label. And I think she paid him. I I, I really don't know about that, but I knew that nothing would break our bond. We spent a a lot of time together, bro. Right. Like, like I know that brother. I know that but he still had to like hurt to. Yeah, I, 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 because of what I was told, and that was, again, it was just so long. I don't don't remember all the logistics right. of it, but um, of course, with me, we had the same management for a while, and then once I broke away from that management, mm -hmm. he distanced himself oh. from from me a little bit that hurt me okay that one that is what hurt me okay. um as far as like showing up for something and late later on I, I don't think that was really an issue I was a little more I was a little jealous of some some of the stuff um that he was doing for um uh <laughs> Justin Timberlake oh yeah mm. I was like that's right there Cry that's 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 right. until God, until I learned that Justin was right so uh. I was like oh Okay, now that's that's a whole wow. different level. So I was just like, all right, all right. Like none of my business. But when he did that tour, everybody showed up. Yeah. Uh, Kim and yeah. everybody. Bad boy, I was just like, yo. I was like, and I, first thing I did, I was like, Tim, uh, come on, man, <laughs> come yeah, on, has to do happen this, with man. Right. But you know, uh, we still got time. We still got time. Right. Let, let me ask you something that Tank said on here. Uh oh, here we go. Uh, here we yeah, go. Go on there later. Here well, we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> later, nah. my brother, my brother, waiting for that. We're gonna, well, we're gonna there later. Yeah. But something Tank said, he he has sung a a, a, Stan, a Sam Smith song, right? Ah, uh, I remember he was that. Like, this this when a, when a white person sings about a certain thing, it could go to certain places, but 
the genre of black music, like if you majority turn on the radio, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's really a, a lot more negative than it is bad. Right. <laughs> I mean, it is good. Positive. You know what I mean? Right, right. Mm -hmm. So is that something that, 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 that you agree with? As far as what, as far as him saying that it, it, it's more bad, what you mean? Um, him saying that, like, a, a white He's not, uh, sometimes a lot of people got to understand it's a testament to us not supporting one another, too. You know what I'm saying? We got to, we got to, if, if somebody comes out with something. Me or anything about it, but for me to be open to even do, I'm, I'm, let me go do my. You how I know? <laughs> I kept searching, searching, searching all your interviews, right? And it was so. I don't want to be involved. I feel like I feel like I'm way too big for stay right. to prove an innocent, right. right? So I don't never. Fight, fight for anything. If somebody thinks, absolutely. Did you ever think, like, um, that it would be where it's at right now? Like right now, <laughs> like right now, you don't need no talent. You, you, you don't, you don't, you don't need. And it's no disrespect, right, absolutely, no disrespect to her, yeah. but I have never seen. This level, like, it's, it's, and there's so many Instagram comedians. Yeah. Like, so that's why I always refer to that time with Mike Epps. So Mike Epps ha had an Instagram comedian on with us, and Mike Epps just fried him. Really? He fried him. It was, it was, it was, huh? Rito, who's my man? Huh? Did you ever think it would be here? Like, society would be here? You know what? To tell, tell the truth, the internet came out, that's it. and once you start to see the progression of. If, just go back to my mm -hmm. right? So I knew Tom. Hey, hey oh, you did? Yeah, nah, I'm just fucking with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, he, I did hear my face friend. party. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, you can start to see it then. Right. And, and and it was brilliant what they thought about when it came to the just the word followers. Yeah. Just Damn. the word followers. Damn, you get deep. That gave you that gave you such a big platform, right? Right. And so once it took me. Yo, it took me to 2015 or 16 to even get Instagram and Facebook really? and all that stuff. Yeah, cause I'm old school, bro. Right, I come right. up through with 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 the Michael Jacksons and right. the Princes right. and the right. New Editions and the Bobbies and all that. We wasn't letting you know when we going to no damn store, man. Right, right. All that right. kind of stuff. Right. Like, we we not right. doing that. So I never really subscribed to it until I understood it. Like yeah. I was truly an old head, old right. school. Like nah, I ain't doing that. I think it actually took away the mystery yeah. and the art yep. of, of an artist yep. because you it's it's so exploited. You know that too much it, access. It's, yeah. Never caught on until 2015. You know, I love social media, but what I hate about social media is we're all on that same level once we open up that app. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. We're all on the same. So there's someone yeah. in, 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 in Nebraska in the basement somewhere yeah. saying, Norm, you yeah. ain't shit. Oh, I can talk and to him. And there's yeah. three people that are going to retweet him. Yeah. He's like, yeah. wait a minute. It, it did violence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 so we, it, and, and wait, but going back to the, you just, when you said followers, I'm like, the only thing that have followers is cults and religions. Boom. That's crazy. Yeah. Boom. So that's why I'm saying the followers, the followers thing is it was the was the key to like, oh man, this and it's all fake. You know what I mean? Like I tell people all the time, you can have a 20 million followers or whatever, put something out mm -hmm. and see how many people get it or whatever. That's so, so cool. 1500. That's what happened yeah. now. Yeah. You see, that's so cool. So what happened with hip hop in, yeah. in terms of charting? They saying this is the first time in, oh, in yeah, 30 yeah. years that hip hop, ain't hip -hop a hasn't had a it's number one record. Yeah. That's why I'm saying it, it's it's really it's, it's really a smoke screen. And so I did see it. That's I, I was like, oh my god, this nah, is. I, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't see it was gonna be this stupid. I saw, I saw it was gonna be this stupid, bro. I seen the, the movie Idiocracy. You ever seen that? Nah, I have not. You gotta see the movie Idiocracy. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it foresaw a lot of it, this it, shit. It yeah. said that really? as we get into time. We got more technology we use, we become stupid. Like, think about it. I don't really know no anybody's phone number. 
Back then, I used to and know. You, I, you won't remember. I, would, yeah. I, would, I used to know twenty people's phone numbers. Right. Like I, I, it made me use my brain. Right. The, the, the smarter the smartphone got, the dumber I got. Yeah. You can't retain the, the, the dumber we got. Don't have it, me. Yeah. The dumber we all got. We are dead. I bet you you can't name five numbers in your phone Absolutely right Absolutely can't. I can't. You can't. Yeah. You probably got one. Your mama's. That's it. I got That's mine. it. That's it. You're yours. That's it. That's it. I only know Eddie Giggs. <laughs> That's because he had the same numbers. Yeah. 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 So we're I didn't see that. Cyborgs, man. We'll tap it. Def definitely, because right. we depend on this. This is us. Right. Yeah. It just doesn't have a face. Yeah. This is us. I, I, sorry to be off subject, but it's on subject. Yeah. The other day, swear to God, <laughs> a therapist friend of mine said to me, you know, you got when you get on social media, it's about certain people you follow. So he said he said that, that he had he had he had clients that would wake up in the morning and, and they they would follow porn stars. Okay. And so when they follow in porn stars, they're thinking about sex. Then you got clients that they follow in kickboxes or or, or people that's or holding pistols and they're thinking about and you don't even realize that you're putting yourself into that. Yeah, right? in that mode. Yes. Yeah, like sweet. that shit was like shit was ill when he yeah. he broke that down to me and I was like, I can't lie, I immediately stopped following certain people. Right. I was just like, yo. <laughs> if it, like, I if, mean, what do we think you constantly see it on feed? You constantly see it. It's programming. It's all programming. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it's doing. It's Um, the internet the whole time I was in I was in um, Italy and Paris, so I tried not to use it the whole time. Oh, okay. But then this morning I woke up and I got trapped right trapped right into that shit. Yeah, I was like, yo, right. holy shit! I'm but okay, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your phone is you. Yes, phone yeah. is you. So, but genuine, we want you to know our our show is about giving our legends they flowers while they're here. That. Appreciate you that. are super legend. We've been trying to get you since this show started. Yeah, man. Your flowers to your face. Oh, okay. hey. Hey. To your face. Thank you, Kenny. Snoop Dogg is better than Grammy because it comes from his own people, goddammit. That's why I got Jenny. Hey. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, do you, did you think, you know, because you have an illustrious career. Yes. Did you think you would would have lasted with, uh, for 27 years back then? No. Nah, I didn't no. think I'm uh, 25. Nah, I, didn't. I knew that the song that I started out with Ultimately, was ultimately was a special song. To my pony. Pony, yes. Because it was supposed to be for a securities intro. Yeah, there you, boy, you, you bad. You better, <laughs> you better get it. You better and get you, it. You asked Timberland for her two yeah, years. I asked him for, um, because back in the days, you remember, uh, I ain't got to yeah. tell you, but yeah. uh, inter interludes was a big thing right. for Joe to see and right. um, uh, even in W, um, uh, uh, Death Row. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So we were doing a lot of interludes, and that's what we were following. We was called right. The Basement. Right. So, you know, Snoop, uh, Snoop, uh, Snoop um, Suge, and all of them, we had a great connection with DeMonte, because right. actually Suge started managing yeah, Jod right. Jodeci for that's a while. Right. And so we kind of we kind of took a little bit from them and mm -hmm. all that. And so um, that was just something that was, uh, uh, you know, special for us to do, man. We, uh, and, 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 and just to maintain and do the interlude. So once he... He was doing some interlude and he was playing it. I was like, "Yo, that's dope, that's dope." And then he played Pony. Now, 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 just picture, picture this. Okay, without the words though, because right. I always <laughs> felt like Pony, anything could have been put to Pony, and Pony would have been a hit, right? He played that song and he was like, "Yeah, this is gonna be for the, this gonna be for the bodyguards, oh, uh, something, something." And I'm looking at him like. The bodyguard, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it just—I I mean, I just heard it. Right. I was like, "Dude, please give me that." So let me ask you, please <laughs> give me that. It took two years. You mean you meant that it was recorded already for two yeah, years? Yeah, y'all heard two it. Two years to actually give you the actual record. Nah, y'all heard it in '96. We recorded. Y'all, y'all. And what and was that's funny? That's just still popping to this to day. day. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Let's make some noise for that. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so what happened was when when you asked me about did I did I know whether it would be whether I would be here? I didn't know wh whether I would be here, but I knew that song was special. So, mm. I I what I did when I did it and we finished it. Uh, rest in peace, Static Major, because he right. wrote it. Yeah. I helped write the verses, but he wrote the song, so right. I, don't, I don't take no credit for that. Um, um, so he wrote the hook. Yeah, he wrote the. Yeah, the hook was already done when I came in there, and I was like, I gotta help you write right. this verse, yeah. these verses, bro. Mm. I gotta have a piece. Of I got to have a piece of that. So, um, you know, um, once that happened, man, I said, um, once once it was finished, it was mastered and all that, and D was like, that's your single right there. That's your single. I was like, yeah, it is. It is. So once he told me that, I reverted back to when I saw Mo, uh, Michael Jackson on Motown 25. Right. I said, you gotta do a step to this that will make people remember this song forever. And so that's what you see in the beginning. I did that.
most of us give up on that record oh, and yeah, think that yeah. it, it wasn't it. Yeah, yeah, What yeah. the fuck made you stay consistent? No, nah, that was just one of the things where De Devontae was looking for a deal and, you know, unfortunately, we had, he had like 16 artists, 16 acts. Right. And, and when I say acts, it can be five people in one group, one people in the all that. <coughs> so, and he was going around and they would always say they wanted me, Missy, and Timber. So he was going to places and and they would tell him, no, we want him, we want her, and we want Timberland as whatever. And he was like, if you don't take them all, you can't have none. Right, right, right. <laughs> it took me years to even to, 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 uh, to, to know this because him and his boy fell out. I won't say his name because we, we had some falling outs or whatever. But um, it was his boy from home. And he was just like, I got to tell you, bro, like you could have been had a deal. And all that, and then I'm looking at him like, Monty telling you that? Nah, 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 that's it. Oh, oh, boy, boy. Okay, my bad. So I'm looking at him like, you a snake. <laughs> like, why would you, you tell me that? Why would you tell me that? No, why would you tell me that? Period. That's your boy. You yeah. can, if it wasn't for him, again, my lawyer. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't even be up here. Why are you telling me that? So I'm looking at him like, you a rat, dude. You, 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 you wrong. But he was telling the truth. He was telling the truth. And so he looked at it like, I guess, man, you gonna stop these these people's talent. And it's gonna be gone. Like, like you, we only have a, a small window. We have, we, I mean, if you're lucky, once you have that that um, crew behind you, if you're lucky, you know, you can get on. But once that fades away, like, it's kind of, it's, it's just kind of a done deal for you. You know what I mean? So, um, luckily, I just stayed with him. I was, I just stayed with him, and things worked out, man. And maybe he thought y'all would be stronger as a conglomerate going into yeah, the I situation. Just, I, I, had a vision yeah. and sometimes when people have a vision they, they, they don't detour from that vision right. and sometimes it, it's a hindrance for the people that he has behind him and with him right. which it was and so that's why a lot of people um, in the crew we uh, you, you, we understood that and we had, had to say I think we did our part in, in the loyalty category right. now we got to start looking out for ourselves so Missy was pretty much the first one, one that left yeah, yeah. that's great was Missy, was Missy, did you ask Missy to, to write on Pony at first? No. Oh, okay. Never, never. Static was like, this is mine. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Dungeon, right? Because when I heard it, I knew it was different, right? And I was like, no. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. But I knew it was special. Right. And so I asked Static. I said, man, you got to help me write this, man. I don't even know what to do with this. Right. But Static was really writing a whole bunch of stuff for um, the albums that was supposedly come, coming out and all that. But, you know, I didn't even know where to start. Wow. So he was like, I got you, dog. I got you. So he went down in the basement we had this place called the base that's what our crew was named mm -hmm. and so it was like like two floors down um, it was this place called um deja Lawn up in rochester okay. uh new york and so it was a big building and we had studios there every, everywhere and that's where we got down at you uh, know what i mean so so because that record rings off to this day still now yeah. one thing one thing that that, that is, is shocking about it is most people like you know, were you doing shows before that record? Because, because, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you were doing shows. Because most yeah. people who, who write a hit record, oh, who, who has the hit record, mm -hmm. is, is catering to their audience. Mm -hmm. Like, so you were doing shows before that. So you knew that this would work at a show. Oh, okay. yeah, absolutely. Um, I was doing shows since I was like, 10. Get up. Damn. Yeah, you know what I mean? So 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 my lineage, my, my time in the music business goes way back. You know what I mean? I, I've always been an entertainer, like like getting in talent shows, break dancing, doing all that. So but once I did that, right. oh yeah, I was like, yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. When did you work for KFC? I worked for KFC <laughs> before I went up there. I had you went uh, to Rock I had three, I had three jobs, man. I yeah. used to work um neighborhood reinvestment. KFC and I used to work at a, a, a construction company. All at the same for time. My father. See yeah, you up and coming artists. Three go jobs. get yourself a job. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Go get three yourself jobs. a job. Yeah. Three this jobs. motherfucker had three jobs. Three he jobs. He's paying for the dream. Three that motherfucker jobs. out here sleeping on your girl couch. Yep. Yeah. Talking about you struggling artists. You want to be struggling. <laughs> go to KFC, nigga. This is real struggle. Get your shit together. Make the noise back. 
Now, Fat Joe said the other day, he's like, if you don't stop being honest, make sure you go get a job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, even when I'm, even when I made it with them, um, when I, well, I thought that I made it, um, in '90, I was working at Champs, and then me and my brother in in New York, you his name had, is. You ain't had Pony out, which. Nah, oh, nah. Okay, I'm about to say, we're talking about, we're talking about from '90. Yeah, you better, you're supposed to quit that job immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After Pony, yeah, it was a wrap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, ain't, you ain't working no way. It was a wrap. Yeah. It was a wrap. Yeah, but I still had that foundation out there. Now I'm able, just like you saying, uh -huh. I'm able to tell a lot of the younger guys up there now. Right. You know, it's just different now, though. You can just sit at home and and do what you yeah, got to do. Right. Right. You can record an album on yeah, your phone. Yeah, it's different now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so I, I'm able to tell that story and know that it it, I, I, it came from the mud. I, I didn't I, I didn't get it given to me. You know what and, I mean? The reason about the art era in the '90s. Which, like, these kids have it so good. I remember if I had to, if I wanted my record to be played in London, I had to go to London. Oh, yeah. I had to go to, if I, if I, if I, if I wanted to play, be played in Virginia, I had to, had to physically to bring the record. Yeah, to, you, you had to do in stores. You had to do yeah. in stores. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In stores. Yeah. That's how I met you, right? Yeah, that's well, how I met That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, and in stores. You know, in stores, was, uh, not stores all of them was good. Crazy. Though. <laughs> some, was some, some of them were stinking. They don't use weird deodorant. You know them days, they want to give you a hug, and you like, I wish COVID was out back. I wish COVID was out back then. Like, COVID, nigga. Like, <laughs> I had to give so many hugs to, to stinky people. God damn it. Uh, I mean, because sometimes they waiting outside for, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, those you days know? was crazy, yeah. man. But you had to do all that. You had, you had to, to do, do the morning that. show. Yeah. You, like, you had to do uh, the in store. Yeah, you had to do dinners. You had to do the in store. You, you, you had, had to do the morning show. The promo tour was free. You didn't get paid to do that. Oh, yeah, man. It hurt me. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. oh, that's when I'm I. still hurt. I'm still hurt doing that. You know how many promo tours I did? Oh my, God. Right now. my third, what well, my third, because you, you know, at the end of the day, you have to do promo tours for um, all your records. And I think yeah. my third record is when I found out that um, a lot of people don't understand and know that we made bag. Like now that y'all saying that bag and all, bag? that was us, bro. Oh, wow. Let me let me give you the history I for need this. To hear it. Let me give you the history for this. Back in the day, you're gonna relate. Yeah. Back in the days, a lot of artists didn't care nothing about, you know, the money part of it. We just wanted girls, we just wanted drinks, and we wanted to go to a party, right? Yeah, I wanted money, though. Yeah, yeah well, you probably did. <laughs> you, you probably did. A lot of us did. Yeah, I know, no, really, I know. I'm, right? I'm playing around. I'm and playing. so, and so, huh. um, my boys, uh, Jerry Vines and Cliff Jones, um, back in D.C., you know, that basically came from, you remember back in the days we had, uh, what's some things called, uh, when, when you on the label, uh, and, and, and you go to the city and you meet oh, the uh, people. street reps, the street, street reps. Street reps, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 but they were saying, it's, yeah, it's street it reps or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Mixer meeting? It, nah, the street reps, but it was another name, though. But, but yeah, because it was two different people. It was the people that ride you around in the van. That's what I'm talking about. It was the, them, okay, them, yeah, them, it's, them, it's, them, it's, them, yeah, them, but it was a name for it. It was street reps yeah. or whatever, yeah. So, so they used to trick us. I don't know about you, but they used to trick yeah. us and say, yo, man, we, we got this club, man. Come, come on, come on, come on, come on. So once I got to, once oh, I got they to, they tricked me too. Yeah, yeah, they tricked you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, but they wouldn't give you no money. Right, right. And so the whole time, a lot of those uh, street reps or whatever they was called, they were getting money for it. And so once, ah. I, and so so once I got a little more seasoned, I was like, man, look, they're gonna they they're gonna have to pay me. They was like, man, come on, man, you gotta you gotta do this for the for the record for the record. And so I actually caught. Somebody, I won't say the name, actually caught somebody. And you know when when you go to the bank, they give you like a bag, uh -huh, like a yeah. bag to put your money in. Uh -huh. So I was like, we was like, you got that damn bag. Give me that damn bag. The like deposit that. bag. The deposit That's bag. where that came from. So I actually had a, 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 I still got a production company named Bag Entertainment. If you go to my fourth CD, um, uh, Snoop introduced my fourth CD, the, the Senior. Wow. And he say Bag Entertainment presents mm. Genuine. Y'all owe, owe Genuine some publicity <laughs> yeah. out there using the bag. <laughs> Yo. That came from us, man. That, that's old, bro. That's old. That's DC stuff. Okay. Okay. So we got a game that we play on the show. Uh oh, Quick yeah. time with slime. Quick time with slime. Okay. 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 You want to get on us playing them? How, how I've seen a couple of the games. Yeah, okay. I, I, I don't know this one. We're going to give you two choices. Mm -hmm. You pick one, 
Oh, here we go. Okay, let me hold if you, it. If you, pick, if you say both or neither, we're drinking. Yeah. All of us are drinking. Say it one more time. With you, though. We're giving you two choices. Okay. If you pick one of the two, we go. We move on to the next question. I'm going to drink anyway. But if you say both, like you can't make up your mind, yeah. then we all drink. All right, cool. Yeah. We, don't, we don't leave you out there. Yeah, yeah. we taking a shot with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I, me and him don't make up these questions. No, no, these guys are evil here. motherfuckers over there. It's all good. Uh, our Dominicans and our hey, Colombian producers. Producers. So bla blame these questions on them. Okay, cool. <laughs> By the way, this first one is classic. Is this Pepsi or Coke? <laughs> okay. Can I get another one, please? I just switched it. Oh, you did? Okay, cool. Because it was a little... You know the difference between Pepsi and Coke? Yes. You Pepsi sweeter. Now well, I can put you in a blindfold. And, and, oh, absolutely. You'll be like... Do it. That's an 80s baby. No, 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 no. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Yeah, yeah. All right, you ready for the yeah. first one? Yep. <laughs> uh oh. Tank or Tyrese? <laughs> 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 You're wrong! You're wrong! I'm like, 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 I'm Take a shot with that one. 